take care of this earth, help keep the rivers clean, and the fresh air we breathe, the forests forever green, recycle your waste, and make the world a better place. The first thing that we are going to give a transformation to is this bottle here. It had olive oil in there and my mum gifted this to me. <laughs> I don't know if anyone else that's a crafter has family that basically give them all their rubbish because they know that you could do something useful with it. So I'm going to start just by removing these labels. I'm also going to get rid of this just with some pliers. Got these two extra bottles because I thought three would look really nice with this larger one in the center. Now I'm going to be painting the bottles. So I've got this bicarbonate of soda and I'm going to mix it in with some acrylic paint. So I think that I'm actually going to paint each bottle a different color. I've got these three so I hope that they do look nice once I'm done. And this is just a little hack to give it a little bit more texture. So it kind of looks like chalk paint, like terracotta parts, that kind of thing. And it's going to thicken the paint, so you're going to need more paint than usual because it doesn't go around as much as it usually would. Okay, I think I'm happy with that, so I'm going to just start painting the bottle. You can already see it's quite thick and it really, really gives it a lovely texture. Probably going to need two layers of paint on this. So I've moved on to the third bottle now and I just wanted to show you another way of getting some texture onto something using this sponge brush. I really love doing this, it's so easy and I think that it kind of almost looks like that, you know, the terracotta sort of look um, without using the bicarbonate of soda. So I think I'm just going to stick with this in future because the bicarbonate of soda sometimes it just gets too thick and it does take like a while longer to dry but I'm really happy with the texture of this alone and if you want to give it like some aged look you can take another coat another different paint um, color and then you can apply it on there as well I really love these earthy organic tones so as I'm going in with my second layer now, this isn't actually dry but I've decided that I want to add a little bit more colour. So you know how I was saying you can add two colours of paint to give it like an aged look? That's what I'm doing here. I'm using a little bit of the brown that I used earlier and I'm mixing it in with the pink now. I'm just using my sponge brush this time because I think it also thins out the paint and it just makes it dry quicker which is really good if you're impatient like me. To finish off the bottle DIYs you can leave them plain so that is an option but I'm going to give you another option which is to use a dinner um, candle and I'm just breaking it in half so that I can fit it inside. Let's cut the wick there and I'll just get the other bigger bottle. I'm going to add that inside. The other option is adding some flowers. You can also add some dried flowers or arrangements like this. I really like these because they're kind of trendy at the moment and they are like modern boho I would say. So this is what I'm going for. Now for the next DIY I'm taking this cardboard box and I'm going to cut it so that I'll just have the box itself here. And just as I'm doing that, I wanted to mention that today's video is also part of a friendly collaboration. There's other ideas for you to check out in a playlist. So we're all doing Trash to Treasure and we've got a special guest. So please do check out the playlist once you're done watching this video. It will be in the description box and my comments. And now I'm going to start painting the box. So I'm going to do the sides. I'm not going to do this part here because I'm going to cover that with something else. So you'll have to wait and see later. So I'm just taking some acrylic paint here just to cover the box because we really don't want it to look like cardboard. So make sure you do the sides as well. It doesn't matter if it comes onto 
the base or the bottom. I've got this necklace from the charity shop which is like a thrift shop in the UK and I'm going to cut it to create some handles and we're also going to paint it. But before I do that I just want to cover the side so I have, I have covered it with some paint but I want to cover it with some material just to make it look more high end and then I'm also going to add some burlap right here on the bottom. So this is what I'm going to be using, some non-slip grip mats. So what you want to do is put it there and then you want to turn it over, I feel like I'm explaining this really badly but you just want to cut its size so you want to cover this side and that side and then we're going to do that for all of the sides of the box Now I've got one side done, I'm just going to use it as a template to know how much to cut for the other side because it should be identical Okay, and now we're going to stick all of these together. I'm using cut glue just to stick it down, so just on the borders really. I found it easier to stick one side at a time. And I just found that out now on my last one. Typical, isn't it? Turning it over. Then you're going to grab your burlap, so I've got mine here and I'm going to put my box on top so that I can measure how much to cut for the base. Now you're going to take your hot glue again and just stick that down. Now I'm just having a look at kind of like what looks right, <laughs> how much looks right for a little handle. So I've decided that looks right, I'm going to cut it. So I just put a little hot glue on that bottom bead so that they don't keep sliding off so that I can put the rest back. Now I'm just matching up the necklace so I know how much to cut for the other handle so that they are exactly the same. And before I cut it I'm going to take some hot glue just so that they don't fall. Okay so that's done. Now just cut the other bit off and do the same with the hot glue so now you're going to paint your handles so I'm going to mix these two together to get the colour that I want because I've done that before with the first DIY, was it the first DIY? I can't remember but the vases that I did earlier and that came out really nice Handles are all nice and dry. I'm just going to hot glue them on either side of my box. So I'm going to try to match this with this side. Now for the next DIY I'm going to be making use of this. This was just from some cat snacks and I think I'm not going to get rid of the label. Hopefully we'll be able to go over that. So I'm going to be using some poly filler to go over this and add some texture and this is speckle for my folks in the US. So wear a glove if you're doing it with your hands. You just want to cover the container with it. You can use a lollipop stick to smoothen it out if you want. Now you can do the next bit with a pencil, you don't even have to do it, it's optional but I just want to add a little bit more texture so I'm taking this shell and I'm just pressing it in, stamping it basically on and this is going to be really nice because once it dries all of this texture is still going to be there. 
Now for the neck of the jar, you just want to take some hot glue and we're going to add some twine just to cover this plastic. So just to remind you, this is the before and this is the after. So as you can see, I created like a little small vignette and I really like it. I'm just so happy with the colours and the textures especially. I think the best thing about this is that it really didn't cost anything and we recycled. And you can't tell that it was made from garbage, can you? And I think that's what I'm really happy about. So that's it for today. I hope that you have enjoyed watching and that you have left feeling inspired. Don't forget to check out the playlist with my friends and their ideas and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!